You know, I didn't grow up with money. We, 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 we weren't rich by any means, but uh, I, I knew I wasn't going to college. I knew that wasn't a reality. And I didn't really want to go to college. I knew I wanted to be in the fight business, and people thought I was crazy. It's pretty obvious. There is a difference between boxing and MMA. I think that jiu-jitsu is very aesthetically pleasing. Oh, no, I think it is you too, understand you know, the game. Quick submissions is not as fun as guys who will have to open up their hands and use combinations. I completely disagree. Sort of I, I completely we'll disagree. Time. A Joe? beautiful rear naked choke. <laughs> Thank you so much. Come Joe on, man. That's exciting. <laughs> I was a bellman in there. I was 19 years old. I made good money. You know, th there's some guys that get those jobs, and those are the type of jobs they, they, they you know, they're Stay lifers. They, they want those jobs forever. And it's a good job. It's not yeah. a bad job. Yeah. It just wasn't for me. And uh, I was literally standing in the lobby one day, and I'm like, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> what am I doing here? This isn't me. This isn't what I want. And I walked out the front door, and one of my good friends, he's still one of my good friends today, who was the doorman, says, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm quitting. And he's like, he's like, what? What are you going to do? I said, I want to be in the fight business. So there was, the, the owner of the UFC at the time was a guy named Bob Meyerowitz out of New York. And uh, I managed Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz. Yeah, no, Chuck, yeah. We got into a huge battle over Tito Ortiz's contract, and through that, one day on the phone, it just all erupted. And he said, you know what? There is no more money. It's all over. This, 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 this thing's in trouble. I don't even know if I have enough money to put on one more show. I called Frank and Lorenzo. And uh, I said, the UFC's in trouble. And I think we should buy it. I think we could buy this thing. We started making some calls. A month later, we bought the UFC for $2 million. $2 million. And sold it for? $4.025 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. <laughs> Jesus. Tell me about your dinner Wednesday night. <laughs> we have a good relationship. Um, it's important to recognize that emotions have no place in, in business. When we first bought this company, we bought a company that wasn't allowed on pay-per-view. Porn is on pay-per-view. This was not allowed on pay-per-view. Our goal was to buy it and get it on free television. People thought that that was insane. When you really think about how this thing was created, these television guys got together and said, let's put on an event where it's style against style. Would a karate guy beat a kung fu guy? Would a wrestler beat a boxer? It was supposed to be one event. They put on this event and it did such big pay-per-view numbers that rivaled the WWE and, and boxing at the time. So you're damn right they were putting on another event, and another one after that, and another one after that. But what the guy never saw, and I don't think he really realized it till too late, was he created a sport. And the answer to that age-old question of which fighting style is the best is none are. You had to have a little piece of everything to be a complete fighter. And Bruce Lee was preaching that back in the 60s. And uh, it really, it changed everything. So reality was huge when we launched the first season of The Ultimate Fighter. It was just taking off. It was, everybody was watching, it was big. And we said, we need to come up with a reality show. And uh, we decided, you know, let, let's come up with a show. Literally, me and my team went into my office at like 8 o'clock at night and came out around 3 or 4 in the morning with the Ultimate Fighter. So, if that first season didn't happen, I would not be sitting here right now. It's a fact. I talk about us as human beings, how we're made up and we love fighting, but every one of us is a fighter. Every day you get out of bed, when you get out of bed every morning, right, you get up out of bed, life is standing right there to kick you in the face. Ready, leg cocked, ready to go, to kick you in the face, because every day when you get up, bad shit's coming at you, right? Forget about work, your personal life, everything. Car don't start, the this, the that. Life is ready to get you, you know? And you gotta get up and you gotta fight through that bullshit every day, you have to.